Hi, this is Evan Sorkin. I'm here to talk to you today about EQX. I want to thank Type Weekend for letting us do that. And uh, let me begin by explaining that EQX is software to test the visual quality of fonts. It's very similar to using uh, the kinds of testing that we're all familiar with for type designers, where you have a text string, you put it into InDesign. But we think it's a big leap forward from that. Uh, today I also want to talk about what led us to make EQX, uh, what the current methods are, what's really great in them, and frankly what's missing. We also want to talk about what has uh, been a semi-successful attempt at bridging the gap in InDesign that I made, but uh, why it also fell uh, short and why EQX uh, it does a better job ultimately. We also want to talk about who EQX is for. There's a big group of people that EQX is meant to serve, and we want to talk about the ways in which uh, these different uh, people uh, will be served in their roles, uh, their professional roles, uh, in a little bit different ways. Let's also uh, look today at uh, what the next steps will be for the completion of EQX and uh, try to forecast when it might be ready for someone like yourself to use. We also want to talk about what we want to do after we get across that finish line, that 1.0. Um, there are a number of things that we'd like to add, and we'd like to find partners to uh, make that happen. We uh, have a lot of material to hold together. Um, I hope we get it all in. And uh, we do want to encourage you to be in touch if you have questions um, or want to contribute to the project in some way. All right, and with that, we'll begin. Hi, so this is the part of the conversation about EQX where I want to talk about the way that we tend to test things now, um, both in InDesign and even in environments like Wakamai Fondue, um, and talk about what is missing from these things and why we would actually want to have an EQX at all. Um, because what we have now is actually pretty wonderful. Um, I'm going to look at two kinds of documents that I've been using to test fonts. Um, and I want to point out what's good about them, um, but I want to also talk about what's missing and why we need EQX to go beyond uh, what I'm currently using for testing. The first thing I want to point out is that this is an InDesign document, and in it we have a text string. The text string is made up of things that I found uh, either were taught to me at the University of Reading or which I found online or which I figured out how to do on my own in some cases. Um, but the vast preponderance of this stuff is things that other people had invented and were kind enough to share. And so um, as we go through, we can see that it goes on and on and on. There's lots and lots and lots of stuff in here. And the point of these things, um, if you're looking at them as you're going along, why is that there? Why is this here? You really have to kind of know why you're looking at what you're looking at and why it matters that you would be looking at it. It's not made explicit. This is one of the big things that's new in EQX, is that every um, test comes with an explicit question, a little context, and potentially some visual references. And so when you're looking at the sample in the end, whether you pass or fail that particular question uh, for the typeface and say, you know, this is working fine, or there's actually something wrong here, it's not uh, something which is vague at all. It's something which you're being asked explicitly. And this is a big advantage. Um, the other thing about text strings is that there's a way in which they're not, they're not, they're a kind of typography, but they're not really the same kind of typography as this. Okay, this is not a million miles away from uh, a text string in a way, um, but this is. And the way in which it's different is that this provides a kind of a cultural context. This shows the typeface in a kind of a heroic mode. It's in a way all important to the object it's on. Um, if we look at things like this or this, again, the context interacts with the personality of the typeface and the suitability of the typeface to the job that it's doing is something that you can ask yourself. Here's the same typeface being used for a caution sign. It doesn't really work as well. It's not suited to this role. And similarly, not so suited to this one either, I would say. This suitability to particular roles is something you can't really get 
out of a text string. And this document that we're looking at now was something that Maggie Putnam uh, put together for me. I gave her lots of visual examples and said, hey, can you make an InDesign document that I can drop a typeface into and I can discover all kinds of new things about uh, what's going on in my typeface. And she, she put it together for me and I was very, very happy that she did. I thought she did a, a rather wonderful job with it. And one of the features that you can see here is that now we're looking at not just one character next to another, but different styles next to um, each other. There's a regular, there's a bold. And there's something about uh, seeing punctuation next to, uh, let's say, this comma next to a four in this kind of context, which renders it less abstract, more real. If something's going wrong here, I'm more likely to notice it personally because now it seems like it might matter. And that psychological difference is, I think, for me as a type designer, extremely uh, valuable. Um, again, uh, I can go a little further on and say, you know, what's going on with the small caps? Now I can see the small caps are not just something abstract, but they have a typographic role to play. And this uh, environment for testing the typeface is incredibly valuable because of that difference. But there are things that are still not happening um, in the text string and in this. And so I'll talk about some deficiencies now. The great thing about this is that for a complete typeface, you can see a lot of things going on. Um, but if your typeface isn't that complete yet, this particular testing document is not going to meet you in the middle. Um, there's no small caps. You won't find out about what's going on. If you don't have italics yet, you won't see what's going on. Um, it really requires quite a complete uh, typeface to get full value from the, the testing document. And so that's, that's a real limitation. Um, there really needs to be something in between that text string of this kind of document. And before I decided to try to make some of those in-between steps, I realized I wanted to solve some other problems as well. So not only did I want to range in sophistication, I wanted to be able to ask this kind of specific question I'm talking about. I wanted to also be able to keep track of um, what was OK in the typeface and what needed help, what needed work still. And I wanted the computer to keep track of it because I was tired of keeping track of it in my own mind. I wanted to have a set of references and just get to work. It's enough to think about how to solve the problem um, without having to remember every single problem there is uh, in the typeface. If the computer can keep track of what problems are left to solve, that's a huge win for me. So I wanted that. Um, I also recognized that the there are a lot of different people that I'm working with when I'm working as a type designer. There are managers, there are experts um, uh, who might consult uh, with me, and all of these people could really benefit from having a shared environment to show what's going on and being able to see what the pro state of the, the progress is. And so having a piece of software which uh, embraces the needs of not just me, but the other kinds of people that I work with professionally seems really, really important. The other thing is the question of expertise. Um, in the end, my feeling when I started type design turned out to be true. I can develop sophistication, I can develop expertise, and I have, I would argue, but the reality is, is that quite a lot of expertise is going to really best come from other people. And so to have an environment where expertise is shared back and forth, and expertise also about uh, different kinds of scripts, not just Latin, not just Cyrillic, uh, but you know Arabic, Devanagari, and every other script which is underserved in the world, um, is going to be incredibly valuable. And so these are the reasons for developing UQX, to provide a way of addressing the gaps that remain. This is the EQX repository. Uh, it's publicly available, so you can access it whenever you want. And if you want to contribute to development, hey, we love it. But if you just want to go there and download the version for yourself and start playing around with it, maybe you want to work on it locally, maybe you want to throw it on a server so that multiple people can access the same uh, version, that's a great idea as well. The idea is it should be flexible. I've made a local version just so that we can test. 
I won't do my normal login because I've prepared an example login for you. And here is the dashboard. Um, since I am the only one on this version, I'm going to show you the projects first and how you make one. So simply here, it's going to ask you for a project name. And projects are important because they allow you to organize your files. Um, you've got members attached to them, you've got tests, and you've got fonts. And you can also import and export. For now, I'll show you how you add your fonts. It should be pretty straightforward. So here, I'm just going to add two variable fonts. And EQX will scan them and extract any ranges possible from them. So you can see here, we've got weights between 300 and 900. If you were to add a more traditional font file, uh, a static one, we'll use Halyard here. It'll represent a little bit differently, but as you see, um, it still detects what the right weight is. Okay, we'll delete that for now. Actually, what we'll do is we'll go through this example project I've prepared. So, example project, example test, we got example test, and largely I'll be demoing the test creation now. So let's go to the first question. Boom. Oops, a little spelling mistake. Fix that. So uh, here is the first question. Pretty simple. What is going on is that we've uploaded a custom HTML document to here. It's switched the font um, for Meriwether because we added it earlier. And it injects it into the document. Obviously, you can get much more complex questions. And I'll walk you through that a little bit. Here's a document where we're showing it at multiple weights, multiple sizes. Um, as we go farther and farther, you can get layouts that are more about look and feel. So here, we're trying to test the uh, feasibility of the italic in longer paragraphs. And we'll go to the next one which is uh, using an image background with HTML on top. The important thing to know about these uh, editors is that you can go into them and you can make changes to the styles that are predetermined. So here, let's say I want to have my H4 as, oh, is that an H4? I'll just click a bunch of them. I'm sure something will come up. Bam. So we switch from italic, which was the uh, default that was injected, to a new default. So we're going to Roman. And you can do that with any element that is editable on that HTML document. There's also a possibility to scrape the web. So here we are, we've scraped Stripe, um, and we can also edit this document. It's pretty straightforward. You just go into this input field, whatever URL you want, and hit download. It takes a few seconds, um, but it should be uh, pretty quick. It's just compressing all of the different assets of that page so that it can be contained within a single file. And that way, it can be taken offline afterwards, and you don't have to depend on that page remaining uh, on the web. So here we are, pretty cool. So let's say I wanted to switch the H2 to italic. Maybe that's not the right one here. Ah, there we go, bam. So you can do that with the entire web, which will save us a lot of time of not having to make visuals when able to. Making additional questions is pretty straightforward as well, right? We'll also have an editor here so that you can make changes to the visuals inside of EQX itself. In order to add your own visuals to EQX, you have a few choices. 
You can make HTML files, you can upload SVGs, we've already discussed the URL scraper. You can also add traditional images like JPEGs or PNGs or even GIFs. The way you do that is pretty straightforward. Upload button like we've done before. You just choose the file that you'd like to upload. Here is an HTML jazz poster and it'll upload like so. Now that you know how to create a question in EQX, I'm going to show you how you can make the visuals for them, or at least how you can make those visuals more reliable. Yes, EQX can upload JPEGs, uh, static images, GIFs, SVGs, but if you're trying to create something that will work to be reused for different fonts in the future, I recommend you use HTML. That being said, I know HTML can be daunting, um, so we've created a little sandbox that we're calling the EQX Visual Generator to try and make that task easier. This is the repository for it. What I recommend you do is you take a clone of that repository or you fork it. Uh, that's what Evan has done here. And that way he can upload and uh, sync his GitHub with any changes that he makes to it. I've cloned that and I placed it here and I've moved my terminal to that same location. And I just want to show you uh, how you get this thing up and going. So it's very simple. I've had a gulp command. So you just type in gulp. And once you run it, it's going to process all of your files. It's going to combine your CSS. It's going to minify everything. Um, it's going to remove anything we don't want. And it's also going to boot up a server so that you can access those files that were just created. Okay. Boom. So in the static directory here, that's where we're going to keep our images. That's where we're going to keep our uh, font files. It's where the things are that we're not going to upload to EQX with. Here is the actual files that will be uploaded to EQX. So let's take a peek at optical recipe. Ha, I like this one a lot. So we've got uh, a pretty simple but specific layout here where we're defining specific things we're checking for. And I want to show you what this looks like on the generator end. Okay, so that's this is the entire file, right? It's barely one scroll. Um, Evan did a great job writing this. Uh, he's, he's done it pretty clearly. But he's also including some interesting things here. And that's what I want to talk to you about right now. So you've got these classes called EQX uh, hyphen whatever, right? CC4, RB2. What do they mean? Well, they are links to specific styles of the font uh, of the type family. So here we have a JavaScript file where we've defined what those classes are and what the styles are connected to them. Because this is designed for Meriwether, uh, this correlates largely with Meriwether, Meriwether's uh, style and uh, range, I guess. So we've got width, optical sizing, and weight, as well as uh, whether it is italic or not. That being said, this could be expanded uh, as far out as we want, because the reason behind this is once you've correlated different classes, with these defined classes, regardless of what typeface you put into EQX, it's gonna try and find the closest match possible, which means that you're not gonna to have to manually set all of the type. You can just download these tests, upload any font you want, and you're gonna get a layout that is as close to the original intention for a different typeface um, as possible, okay? Some things to also show is that we're using Stylus, which if you want to write like normal CSS, you are more than welcome to. There is no difference. But if you want to take it a step farther, um, you can. I've included some CSS frameworks here. So, you know, if you would prefer to use Bootstrap or Bulma or Peer, whatever you want, right? You just uncomment them and you're good to go. I'm also including some open type utilities. Now, these are important because we're designing layouts to test type features. Um, so you're probably gonna wanna test for small caps, you're probably gonna wanna test for old style numerals and etc. okay? What this allows you to do 
is it allows you to select those open type features by just adding a class, right? The whole idea behind the sandbox is it's class based so that you just have to learn a few simple things and then you can quickly produce whatever you want. Hi, so now we're at the end of the EQX uh, video. I wanted to just go over a couple of other things uh, quickly. One is that we think that we may be done with EQX at the end of the year or something like that. Um, I think uh, I'm gonna continue to add uh, content in terms of uh, reusable content for uh, testing Latin, um, which brings up um, another point, which is that I'd love to get uh, tests that are relevant for, uh, let's say, Tamil or Telugu or Devanagari or Arabic or any script um, that people would like to see uh, supported in the future. There are quite a lot of uh, scripts where there are not enough fonts, and I think that if uh, we had uh, tests available for those scripts in EQX, a lot more designers might want to design for those scripts and we might get way more fonts way faster. And I'd like to see that happen. Um, I'd also like to say there are some features we'd like to add uh, to EQX in the future um, and it would be great to get funding to provide them. An example of this kind of feature is uh, the ability to either add symbols not just to add notes saying what's wrong and, and, and uh, highlighting where that thing is wrong, um, but to allow us to uh, either put in a symbol uh, next to the place saying, you know, a little darker, a little lighter here, or, um, you know, pinch this tighter uh, or whatever it is. I think there's uh, probably 15 or 20 symbols which we could add, and that would cover the majority of uh, note taking that we might make. The other thing is, is that it would be nice to be able to take notes uh, using a stylus on an iPad. Um, and so I'd love to get funding to allow these kinds of things to happen in EQX um, and to get those kinds of additional features added next year. All right. Well, I look forward to chatting with you all in the future. And uh, again, thank you to Type Weekend for having us. And um, yeah, hopefully we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.